it's me, Peach Pet Paradise, and today's video is Syrian Hamster Care. Firstly, I'm going to start off with cages. 360 square inches is the complete minimum for all species of hamster. An 80 by 50 centimetre cage, a 20 gallon tank and a 110 quart plastic bin cage all meet up to 360 square inches. Do not go under this size. Under this size would be too small for any species of hamster. To find out what size in square inches your cage is, times the length by width and that will give you the total size of square inches. Next topic is bedding. Every hamster needs bedding. There is a huge variety of beddings you can buy for hamsters and a few beddings I recommend are paper and paper wool flakes. This is the bedding I use for honey. Any paper based beddings, Care Fresh and Off Brands, Bitch, Tumble Fresh, Shredded Paper which you can buy at pet shops or shred yourself as long as it's soy ink, Megazorb, and aspen. As for unsafe beddings, you should never use pine, cedar, scented types or any softwood brands as these contain harmful oils which can irritate hamsters respiratory systems and this can cause respiratory problems. And over periods of time these will build up toxins in hamsters kidneys and livers so stay away from these. As for unsafe nesting materials, never use cotton wool based beddings. When hamsters pouch this, if they swallow any of this, it can wrap around their limbs, causing the bedding to not pass through their intestines, and they will not be able to digest it. Also, as it's very thready, it can tangle around their feet and cut off circulation, and it can wrap around hamsters' teeth, so stay away from it. Instead of for safe nesting materials, you can use any paper-based beddings, and even toilet paper is great and is a much cheaper option too. Going on to diet. Getting the right hamster food is very important. The protein levels should be 17 to 22%, the fibre should be 8 to 10%, and the fat should be 4 to 6%. Syrians are not prone to diabetes, unlike the dwarf species, so they can manage more sugars and fats in their diet. However, if given too much, like all hamster species, this will cause them to become overweight, so it's best to give them a healthy diet and not feed too many sugars and fats. There are quite a few different food brands sold for hamsters, but there are a few great UK, Canadian and US foods I recommend. The following UK foods are Harry Hamster, Pets at Home Hamster Muesli, but this is not recommended for dwarf species, and Burgess Super Hamster Harvest. As for Canadian and US hamster mixes, I recommend Hazel Hamster, but it's only sold in some areas, and Carefresh Complete Menu, but this is not safe for dwarf species apart from Robo Hamsters. It's also great to mix in pellets to add more nutrition to the diet, although pellets are plain and most hamsters can get easily bored of pellets, so these should be used as an additional mix. For UK pellets, I recommend Supreme Side Selective Hamster Pellets, and for Canadian and US pellets, I recommend Oxbow Hamster and Gerbil Food, Living World Extrusion, and Missouri Hamster and Gerbil Diet. I would suggest you stay away from foods like no-name brand foods, and any KT brands of hamster food, as these often don't contain great quality ingredients for hamsters. Hamsters are omnivores, which means they can have vegetables and proteins, which can also include meats. Another part of the diet should be filled on vegetables, given at least once a week. It's also ideal to add some boiled or scrambled egg to the diet for great protein around once a week. As for other sources of proteins, you can use dog or cat treats, dog or cat food, cooked chicken, and other meats like turkey and beef. Now this is actually optional, but treats. I would only recommend giving them around two a week. And lastly, along with their diet, of course they'll need a good supply of fresh water. Next topic is on hamster wheels. It is vital that Syrian hamsters have wheels in their cages at all times. Hamsters need wheels to keep fit and healthy and to burn off any excess fats they would have gained during the day. They wake up at night to run on their wheels. Without wheels, hamsters don't get the large exercise source and they can gain weight, which in some cases can lead to obesity. So it's vital you have one. The minimum size for a Syrian hamster is eight inches. Although some hamsters can outgrow this size and do require the larger sizes like the 11 inch wheels. It's very important you get the right size wheel 
If hamsters run on a wheel that's too small, their backs will bend and over a long period of time this can cause major back problems. Never use wire or mesh wheels as this can cause bumble foot when hamsters run on them. Also their little feet can get stuck in the holes so stay away from them. Instead use these solid based wheels, either plastic or wooden. There are a ton of different wheels out there and here are just a few I recommend. Trixie Rodent Wheels, Rodent Wheels and Comfort Wheels. Those are some great ones. To choose. Hamsters teeth like all rodents constantly grow so it's vital they have chews to keep their teeth down to prevent their teeth from overgrowing and to prevent dental problems. There is such a wide range of chews out there and it's best to give different ones to make it more fun and interesting for them um, and this can be like mineral type ones, even dog chews are great so ones like Bonios, Antos, Rice Bones, Milk Bones are great as well because they're all hard and they do keep hamsters teeth trim nicely and there are also natural types like the wooden type, you can get colourful wooden ones, you can get the um, completely natural ones as well is this apple. Um, you can get loofah, sisal, grassy types and even willow. This is a willow type one, little barbell. So there's just so many types of different shoes you can get and providing with a range is just better because they have more to chew from. Next is toys. It is very important to always have toys in your hamster's cage. Without them, they can become very bored and it will often cause behavioural problems, bar chewing and stress from boredom. That's why we have things like toys, to provide great fun and interest to prevent this. There is a huge variety of toys and toys can range from things like tunnels, bridges, hideouts as well and also blocks with holes in and any sort of toys with holes in and toys come in many shapes colours and sizes and not forgetting in many different materials too like plastic, wooden, cardboard, corn husk, edible type, straw and grassy. And these don't have to be shop bought, you can use DIY toys and these are a much cheaper option as well. Things like toilet and kitchen mold tubes, lollipop sticks to create and build something for your hamster and any empty cardboard boxes are great but just make sure there's no sir tape on these as these are not safe for hamsters but DIY toys are great and make so much fun for hamsters you can cut out holes and make it really fun and interesting for them it's also a good idea to change around and swap toys in your hamsters cage at least twice a week hamsters can get bored of their layouts if they stay the same throughout the week so by doing this will make it more fun and interesting for your hamster to explore in now going on to Cage cleaning. Serene hamsters, as for all hamster species, will need their cage cleaned out every week. However, this should be fully disinfected only once a month, as disinfecting everything every week can actually lower a hamster's immune system. It's ideal to spot clean at least two times a week, as this will keep the cage cleaner and keep any odours mild and also make cage cleaning easier. Next are sand baths. Now these are optional. And hamsters don't need these, but these are great for when hamsters' coats get a little bit greasy. The sand reduces the oils, making the coat soft and grease free. Never bathe a hamster in water. Getting a hamster wet can make them very ill and they can get chills and even die from this. The sand to use is chinchilla sand, although this is for chinchillas, but it's completely safe for all hamsters. And lots of hamster owners use it. Now do not confuse this with the chinchilla dust. This is very harmful and can affect hamsters' respiratory systems from breathing in dust. You can also use children play sand, but this must be baked in the oven for 15 minutes at 350 degrees Celsius, which fully sanitizes it, making it perfectly safe for Syrians. Not only do sand baths keep hamsters' fur in good condition, but some hamsters will actually enjoy rolling around in the sand. Keep in mind, in the wild, hamsters would be living in deserts, and they would be digging, rolling, and burrowing in sand. So this is a natural instinct and sand baths are great because this mimics what they would be doing in the wild. Going on to fur grooming. Now hamsters don't require much grooming as hamsters will groom themselves and if you use sand baths that will help keep their fur in good condition as it is. 
You can buy the small rubbery brushes sold for hamsters and I actually find these are quite good or for another option you can use toothbrushes and these have soft bristles and are gentle on the fur. But make sure any toothbrush you use is specifically for the hamster and it has not been used for brushing teeth with toothpaste. Now brushes are not a must for short haired Syrians but it's better to have one. If you do decide to brush your short haired Syrian then around once a week is fine. As for the long haired Syrians they do require grooming and they can be brushed around two times a week. The reason why you should brush long haired Syrians is because when their fur gets to the fully grown length without brushing can sometimes cause the fur to pick up pieces from the ground and bedding and it can tangle and mat. So that's why it's ideal to have a brush that can get rid of these and leave their fur silky, shiny and matte free. Going on to playtime. You should give your hamster at least 20 minutes of playtime every night. But it's better to give them more than this. The more playtime, the better. Hamsters are nocturnal, so this means they're active and awake at night time. It's very cruel to keep hamsters in cages without playtime, unless they're really ill. They need human attention every night but if a healthy hamster is kept in the cage for a long time, it can cause behavioural problems and bar chewing. Also, to play with hamsters and to the reason why you should play with hamsters is also to keep them fit and healthy and any excess fat they would have gained during the day, they can burn off through playtime. Um, and there are many ways to play with your hamster, like the play box, handling, lap time, free range on the bed, you can even let your hamster free range in a well secured hamster room but you must supervise them at all times. Um, bringing your hamster outside but obviously make sure the grass is no sprayed with pesticides or chemicals. Honey's favourite is free ranging on the stairs so there are many ways to play with your hamster. And the last topic I'm going to talk about is solitary. Syrian hamsters are solitary species which means they must live alone. They must not be housed together from over 8 weeks of age. You'll often find pet shops keeping baby Syrian hamsters in the same tanks but this is only mainly from lack of space and because pet shop hamsters are usually 8 weeks old or under. Hamsters can be kept together till the age of 8 weeks but when over this age they must be kept alone. Syrians are very territorial if housed together. They can cause serious injuries or they can fight and fight to the death. If you have Syrians together and they appear to be happy, they will be at a point in time where they will fight and it's up to you as a responsible hamster owner to separate them for their own safety. So if you have Syrians kept together, separate them immediately. So that's the video on Syrian hamster care. I hope you enjoyed and learned about caring for your Syrian hamster. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you like our videos and want to see more, then go subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, then don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even share the video to help others. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Hey everyone, it's me, Peach Pet Paradise, and today's video is Rat Anatomy.